My biggest concern, of course, like with most people who get injured, is, uh, you know, can we still rock out? I was getting a bed bath one time. The nurse was washing me down. And then apparently she hit something and it jumped. Now, if y'all want to know what jumped, y'all know what jumped. It jumped. And when it jumped, <laughs> I, I looked down. I was like, oh, OK, wait. I just don't normally just show this thing in front of anybody. Then before I knew it, it was at a full erection. And when, it, when I say full, it was full. It was shiny. Oh, I'm sorry. That's too much. That's too much. They said I could say what I want. But at that point, I knew life was going to be OK, because most men, we're, we're simple creatures. You understand? All the men in here know what I'm talking about. We're simple. We, we don't care if we just have a head and a dick on our shoulder. <laughs> Long as the dick come off, we're happy. So when you have a spinal cord injury, arousal changes. In a man, an erection is what we see in the genitals at the time of arousal, and it's basically an increase in blood flow. Depending on where the level of injury is, one type of erection, the psychologic erection, or the other type of erection, the reflex erection, can be affected. When the erection is affected, it can cause a problem with having an erection, maintaining an erection, and it can just make the erection a little bit different in quality. So I had to go to my doctor and I said, Doc, man, what's, what's going on, man? It, it came up, he was like, you know, it, it can do that. But being paralyzed, you know, uh, sometimes it gets fickle. But even when I was walking, it got fickle. Sometimes he'd be like, look, I'm going to go 100, or sometimes I'm going to go 5. You're going to have to make up an excuse for the 5. But when that 100 comes, you're going to be the man. What do we do when that happens? Well, the first thing is to work on your erections and see what will make the erections better and what will make them worse, just naturally. Now, one of the things you might do first is if you can have an erection, but you can't maintain the erection, is trying a penis ring. It is a elastic ring that you slide down to the base of the penis, and that will maintain the blood in the penis. Now, one thing that's important is you don't want to keep that ring on for more than 30 minutes. After that point in time, you can cause actually a loss of blood flow to the penis, and that's not a good thing. If just trying the ring doesn't work for you, there's a lot of other techniques that work to improve erections. Another option you can do is the suction devices, and actually there's a suction device that you just kind of pump up the erection, and the erection will occur that way, and then you use a ring. Sex could be a little expensive sometimes, you know, because you got to have some backup on plan. I was looking at some of the devices with the pump and things. I, I never used those, you know, because he still get up. But every now and then he act funny. So when he act funny, you got to drug him. Yeah, you know, I don't put the needle in. Oh, but I'll pop that blue Viagra pill. Yes, I will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something about the Viagra that uh, sex is really expensive right now is what I'm trying to tell you. We can use medications such as Viagra and Cialis and Levitra. And these medications are really good to improve erections for men with spinal cord injuries. There's another medication you can use for erectile dysfunction, and that is injection erections. And with injection erections, you actually inject the penis with medication that will allow an erection to occur. One thing we have to make sure when we think of erections, though, is that you don't jump to the pills. Viagra and all those pills are very expensive. What I like people to be able to do is try the less invasive techniques first. When a man does have erectile dysfunction, what I like to do is make sure I look at what medicine the person's on that could cause problems with erectile dysfunction. And what I want to do as a physician is actually first decrease the medications people are taking as opposed to increase them. So we want to look into timing of medications and whether any of the medications can be impacting erectile function. So if you're taking a medication, you know that impacts negatively on your erections, what you want to do is not take the medication before you have sex, but take it after instead. The penis has his own brain. When that blood flow hit it, he out there. Now, due to the fact that I'm a spinal cord injury, he may not be able to see the visual of what I see, but you know, he's still alive. So if you touch it, he gonna jump. You know, if you had certain things going on when you were on your feet, you, you know, you probably still have it going on. When I was on my feet, you know, I was a long distance runner. Yeah, not like track star, but sexually. 
But you have to be careful too when you're thinking about erections and spinal cord injury. You have to think about your body and what you're wearing. If you're gonna be sexually active, don't leave your jeans on. Think about what's going on because sometimes you can have an erection and it can be too hard. You might be taking Viagra or one of the other medications. Sometimes you can get an erection that lasts and lasts and doesn't go away. And that's actually a condition called priapism. And priapism is an erection that doesn't leave and actually becomes a medical emergency after a few hours. Sometimes people are taking the medication Midodrin to treat priapism. So that's an important thing for people to know about. So there's a cadre of different things you can use for erectile dysfunction. Men have a lot of options now if they have this problem after spinal cord injury.